Hi there, and welcome to DizzyIT.com and our video on stopping starting network adapters using the NetShell command. Um, this command can be run in both DOS and in PowerShell, and it can also be used in batch files for whatever purpose you need them for. Um, just have a quick look at what we're going to have a look at in this article. Just going to have a look at NetShell. What is it? Um, NetShell options. How to find the interface name that you want to enable or disable using either control panel or a NetShell command, and then the actual uh, act of enabling or disabling the interface. Uh, the article this relates to is found on dizzyit.com and under the same name. Stop and start network adapters in a batch file or DOS using NetShell. Okay, so what is NetShell? NetShell is a DOS command and pretty powerful command. You can do a heap of stuff relating to Windows Network with it. To see all the available options, open up a DOS window and then do a um, NetShell forward slash question mark. And here you can see a um, heap of options here. You can um, add um, entries, you can manipulate DHCP, some firewall stuff, interface, which is what we're going to be looking at today. Um, there's some show commands which we'll also be looking at and things relating to uh, WinHTTP and also WLAN information as well. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to find out what um, interface we want to be manipulating. Now there's a couple of different ways to do that. I'm just going to open up my control panel here. First of all is with control panel, going into the network and sharing center and then change adapter settings. We're going to be looking at the wireless network connection today. So that would be the name of the interface. The other way to find it is using NetShell itself. And the command is NetShell interface show interface. Okay, and we can see once again wireless network connection enabled and connected. Okay, so we know that's the command we want to use, the, the interface we want to use, what's the command to uh, enable it or disable it. For that, it is, and I've written in the uh, Word document here as well, it's NetShell interface, set, interface, the name of the connection, and then whether you want to enable it or disable it. Okay, so in practice it looks like this. Okay, so you don't get any confirmation that it's enabled or disabled, but if you don't get an error, it normally means it's been pretty good. Um, you can check that it's been disabled by going back to the NetShell interface show interface command, and you can see here it's disabled and disconnected. To re-enable, excuse me, I just find if I can go in the right direction. Once again, NetShell interface, set interface, the name of the interface, and then enable. There's no confirmation that it's been re-enabled, but going to a show interface will show you it's been re-enabled. Please note though, it hasn't been reconnected. I'm not going to cover that here because it's a little bit of a different tangent. I'll cover that in a future video. Okay, so um, what have we covered today? We've had a look at NetShell. Uh, what is it? A few NetShell options. How to find the interface name that you want to um, enable or disable using the control panel or the show interface command. Um, and then how to enable or disable the uh, interface. These commands can be rolled into batch files, um, really easy to do for whatever reason, if it's a SOE issue or something to that effect, or you want to ensure that a connection is going over um, a certain interface um, to talk, contact certain services. Okay, so if you want to read the article, it's here on dizzyit.com. Uh, my name's Graham, and thanks for watching.